So, what do all these very different battery chargers have in common? Well, the answer is they all need some sort of external power supply. And the majority of battery chargers these days don't have a built-in supply of their own. And whatever supply you use needs to deliver sufficient power so you can make full use of the charger. So it'll need to be quite big, something like this. Toolkit RC have just released this P200. It's a 30 volt, 10 amp, 200 watt mini desktop variable power supply. And it's the perfect companion to any of the Toolkit RC range of excellent battery chargers, or indeed any battery charger that needs an external DC supply. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. The first things you notice about this when you pick it up are how flipping small it is for a 200 watt desktop power supply and how beautifully made it is. If you look at the marketing pictures, it looks quite big, but this is just tiny and it looks and feels very solid. This outer case here, it isn't plastic, it's black anodized aluminium and it's fantastic. So the P200 is a mains or DC powered 200 watt constant current and voltage power supply. And if you use its internal main supply, it'll deliver 100 watts, or you can use a seven to 25 volt DC power supply external, in which case that'll give you 200 watts. On the back is the mains inlet here and you can use anything between 100 and 240 volts AC, so it's international. There's a seven to 28 volt DC input and the fan, and it's got an on off switch. I do like on off switches, they just seem so civilized. And to turn it on, you just hit this little button down here and you're greeted with a burst of fan and the doody doo. And there's the usual high quality IPS LCD screen toolkit RC have used on all their products recently. But this one is 240 by 240 pixels, 1.54 inches. And as you can see, you've got all the usual numbers you'd expect on a power supply, volts and current and so on. But it's also got this really nice curved display that shows how this is being used. There's the positive and negative banana plugs, main outputs there. And down here, there's a USB fast charge output, which I'll talk about more in a minute. So to use this, you just dial in the constant voltage and current you want using these scroll wheels. And these are very positive. They've just got a nice click and they register really nicely. And so you set the voltage and the current down at the bottom here. So let's choose, say, 27 volts. And we want 5 amps. So that's on 10 amps at the moment. Let's go down to 5 amps. And I'll say these, this is constant current. Pretty clever. And turn it on you just short press the V scroll wheel. And the display now shows the actual voltage and current on these output connectors. So let's just have a quick check with a multimeter and see what that is. 27.0908 volts. That's pretty good. No current is being shown though. So let's add a load to this so we can see something. I've got this little battery charger here. Turn that off. Plug those in. So that's now powering up this battery charger over here. Like a load in, so it's drawing 30 milliamps at the moment. And let's see, 
So Okay, so that's charging and you can see now that we've got 27 volts on the output of this. Obviously that's not going to the battery because the battery charge is sorting all that out and we're drawing 0.92 amps. Now if you look at this display along the top bar here, we've got the USB charger voltage and current along the top there and then we've got the internal temperature of this power supply. The curve graph here, this area down here, this is showing the real-time history of the main outputs, which is very nice. Red is volts, green is current. And then under the graph, the display down here, if you can see it, is showing, let me get something to point with. It's showing the time that the output has been on, in this case, two minutes, 29 seconds. And then we've got the current power output, which is 24.3 watts, and the power statistics along here in watt hours. And the big green and red numbers show the actual voltage and current at the main output. It's all really clear and just very nice, very easy to read. To turn this off, you just short press the V button again. And there we go. And this is now complaining because it's got no input, so let's disconnect that. What's nice about this is you can set the volt and current before you turn the output on. And this is usually something you only tend to see in higher end bench power supplies. So you can dial up what you want and turn it on. And it's dead easy to use. So if you long press the V scroll wheel, you get to the settings screen. Let's just, there we go. And there's loads of things you can change in here. You can change the step voltage. So that's how it, the voltage it steps up and down when you scroll this, step current, how often the screen updates, lowest input voltage where you get warning, um, all sorts of things, backlight, how loud the beep is, what language you use, it's even got some sort of theming in here, or we'll return it to factory settings. And then you just press back to go back to where you were. Now, if you long press the A scroll wheel, what we've got here is the USB-C output monitor. Now, I'm sure you've all used USB-C cables to connect your phone to a charger or a computer but it's not like the earlier USB-A or B connectors. Basically, it's a 24 pin connector and socket that supports loads of different data and power protocols. So you've got things like PD 3.0, PD 2.0, PPS and so on. And the details of this are really for another video. They use a discovery approach to negotiate the power required anywhere up to 20 volts at five amps. So the device you connect to this tells the power supply what it needs to deliver. And this screen shows you everything you need to know. It shows the volts, time it's been on, the capacity, the protocol that's being used, and the state, and so on. Press that again and it goes away. And you can use a USB plug on here and just connect it to your computer, and this will just appear as an external drive. Grab any new firmware downloads from the Toolkit RC site and simply drag the app UPG file onto the drive. Recycle the power on the P200 and bish bash bosh, you've upgraded the firmware. All their charges are like that, it's just so easy to upgrade. You get a small manual like this in a couple of languages, or you can download it off their website and you get the mains cable which is plugged in the back here for your country plus a bunch of cables. Now you can calibrate the mains output if you find they're a bit off to do that. Just unplug those, turn the power off. So what you do is you turn the power on and then long press these two and that gets you into the calibration screen. And that allows you to tweak the output voltage to be 100% dead on balls accurate 
if you need to. And then you can save the settings. But do remember, this is only as accurate as the voltmeter that you're using to measure it. People forget that. Now, you may be asking yourself, why does this have a DC power input? Couldn't you use that DC power input just to power your battery charger? Well, yes, you could. But remember, this is a variable power supply that delivers a constant voltage and current that you've set. As you've probably gathered, I think this is a really, really nice piece of kit. It's not cheap at 80 pounds or around $99, but you are getting what you pay for. It's a high quality product. And regular viewers of the channel will know that I'm pretty fussy about power supplies. I've done quite a few videos about how invaluable bench power supplies are, especially variable bench power supplies, just for general use and this doubles as an extremely capable battery charger supply as well. It's well up to it and it's tiny. Now, I've been using this instead of my trusty variable bench power supply all week. I've used it as a battery charger supply and for some of my other electronics projects and just general use. Now, my regular variable power supply is only 0 to 18 volts and it gives me two amps. So, Doing anything that requires, say, 6S voltages on the bench is just not possible. And just on mains input, I can set this to 25 volts, which is sort of 6S, and it'll deliver around 4 amps. This thing's about 95% efficient. And that power is way more than I generally need on a day-to-day -day basis. If I do want the full banana, <laughs> I can just plug one of my big DC supplies into the back there. So, this tiny little box has now completely replaced my trusty old supply and I am mighty impressed with it. I'll leave some links in the description so you can check out the latest prices and any offers and do visit Toolkit and have a look at their website. Just follow the link in the description. They continue to deliver some really awesome products. As always, Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I post new content. And I'll see you next time.